Ngayon naman, gagamitan natin ng iba't ibang techniques yung pagkuha or pag-evaluate ng limits ng isang rational function. Pwede tayong gumamit ng factoring method using its conjugates and simplifying yung ating mga complex fractions. At yun yung mga types of limit function na i-evaluate natin today. Starting with the first example, meron tayong limit of x squared minus x all over x squared minus 1 as x approaches 1. Now, by direct substitution, alam natin na yung ating limit ay hindi mag exist kasi yung ating denominator is equal to 0. Now, tandaan nyo na kapag ang rational function, function is 0 over 0, it's undefined. Dahil in most cases, ang mga pagkakamali ng mga estudyante is, to th is thinking na ito ay equal to 0. So remember, kapag may denominator yung 0 nyo, kahit anong number pa yung nasa taas, lagi siyang undefined. Now, since undefined yung ating limit ng function na ito using substitution method, kailangan natin gamitan ng factoring technique yung ating function para masimplify natin yung rational functions to see if talagang undefined yung ating function by x equal to 1. Now, yung ating x squared minus x, pwede na siya i-factor using greatest common factor. I-pull out yung x, and you'll have x times x minus 1. Now, itong x squared minus 1 naman ay special case. Yan yung tinatawag nating uh, difference of two squares. At sa pag-factors ng difference of two squares, tandaan nyo na ito yung formula na gagamitin natin para ma-factor out yung mga patterns or yung mga um, expressions na difference of two squared. So, a squared minus b squared is, or can be expanded into a plus b and a times b, or a minus b. Now, kapag ka sinimplify natin yung ating denominator into x plus 1 and x minus 1 dahil siya ay nagpa-fall under that category, mapapansin nyo na pwede natin cancel out si x minus 1 at si x minus 1, leaving us with x all over x plus 1. Now, since nakapag-simplify tayo ng rational expression, pwede natin uling itry yung substitution method to check kung undefined pa rin yung ating function at x equal to 1. So by substituting 1 to x, you see that it's equal to 2. So therefore, yung ating limit ay nag exist talaga at f of x equal to 2. So substitution, kung hindi siya mag-work, kailangan yung gumamit ng iba pang techniques para ma-verify kung talagang um, unidentified or undefined yung ating uh, function at x equal to so, um, a certain constant. So, yan yung ating example number one using factoring technique. Now, for number two, we have limit of x cubed plus 8 e um, all over x plus 2 as x approaches negative 2. Now, pinapakita ko ulit na by direct substitution, yung ating denominator will turn into zero. So, therefore, undefined yung ating function at x equal to negative 2. However, since we're working on limits, kailangan natin gumamit ng techniques or iba pang mga techniques para ma-verify kung talagang un undefined yung ating function at x equal to negative 2. So, yung ating numerator, check nyo kung pwede nyo siyang simplify At since x cubed plus 8 falls under the pattern of sum of two cubes, ang ating uh, formula or factoring formula for the sum of two cubes will be given by a cubed plus b cubed na pwede natin i-expand as a plus b times a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. At yan yung gagamitin natin para ma-expand natin yung ating um, numerator. So by factoring from x cubed plus 8, magiging x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4 yung ating numerator. At yung denominator natin will stay the same. Pero ngayon, pwede na natin siyang ma-cancel at ma-simplify yung ating rational expression. Now, we only have x squared minus 2x plus 4 after simplifying our rational expression. And by direct substitution, mapapansin nyo na yung ating function as x approaches negative 2 is equal to 12. So therefore, yung ating limit is nag exist using the factor or factoring the numerator. Yung ating susunod na example naman at example number 3, we have limit of x minus 16 all over the square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 16. So once again, by substitution method, we know that yung ating denominator will turn into 0, so it's undefined. Pero since pwede pa natin masimplify yung ating rational function, now tandaan nyo na kapag nagkaroon kayo ng may mga radicals, either sa numerator or sa denominator, kailangan nyo siyang gamitan ng conjugate. At yung conjugate natin is 
yung ang kukunan natin ng conjugate is laging yung part ng fraction yun na merong radical. At in this example, yung ating denominator ay may radical, so pwede natin siyang irrationalize by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of your denominator. At ang conjugate ng square root of x minus 4 is square root of x plus 4. So you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate at masisimplify nyo yung rational function nyo later on. So now we have to multiply the first fraction by the second fraction, yung ating uh, numerator. Pag multiply natin siya, you'll have x minus 16 times square root of x plus 4. So multiply across. Now, ang pag multiply naman ng conjugate, meron tayong special rule kapag nagmumultiply tayo ng conjugate. At ito yung inyong tatandaan kapag nagmultiply kayo ng conjugate. Kapag meron kayong a plus b times a minus b, which is the conjugate of a plus b, yung sagot nyo is magiging a squared minus b squared. At ito yung i-apply nating rule para masimplify natin yung ating denominator. So from square root of x minus 4 times square root of x plus 4, meron tayong ngayong square root of x squared minus 4 squared will turn into x minus 16. At mapapansin nyo na pwede na natin i-cancel out yung x minus 16 and using this technique, ma-verify natin yung limit is nag exist kasi pag sinubstitute natin yung 16 sa ating uh, simplest form ng ating rational function, it's equal to 8, therefore the limit exists. So yan yung example number 3 na gumagamit naman ng conjugates para sa pag-simplify ng ating rational expression. Now for number 4, we have the limit of square root of 1 plus x minus 1 all over x as x approaches 0. By substitution method, yung ating denominator turned into 0, so it's undefined. Now, tulad no example number 3, since you're seeing radical in your fraction, you can use the conjugate of your numerator to simplify the rational function. So, sa conjugate natin ngayon, since ngayon nasa top or nasa numerator yung ating radical, yung conjugate nitong ating numerator will be square root of 1 plus x minus 1. At iyon yung imumultiply natin sa numerator at sa denominator. At tulad ng ginawa natin sa pag-multiply ng conjugate, since yung conjugate natin is nasa taas, so a minus b times a plus b, kapag minultiply nyo yan later on, ma-cancel nyo lang yung ibang mga parts ng ating um, rational or radical function. So we have to multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. So, mapapansin nyo na kapag ka nagmumultiply ako ng denominator using limit function, hindi ko sila dinidistribute or pinagsasama. Pinagdidikit ko lang muna sila para ma-check ko kung makakancel ko yung ibang mga terms doon sa aking rational function. Kasi kapag Sinimplify ko siya further at minultiply ko at finoil ko yung ibang mga function, hindi ko na makikita yung pwede kong i-cancel. So, yun yung isa sa mga techniques na dapat nyo ring tandaan na huwag kayong basta-basta agad-agad na mag-distribute unless may makita kayong pattern na pwede nyo i-simplify. Gaya nga ng ginagawa ko ngayon. So, minultiply ko lang sila, pinagsama ko lang sila, pinagdikit ko lang yung... Um, um, a and B, so I have my function right here. Now, since alam ko na pag kinumbine ko yung conjugate, yung 1 plus x inside the radical multiplied by square root of 1 plus x will turn into 1 plus x. At yung 1 times 1 will just turn into 1, so I have 1 plus x minus 1. At yung aking denominator, hindi ko siya i-distribute, so iiwan ko lang siya, so I have x times square root of 1 plus x plus 1. Now, yung 1 plus 1 minus 1, pwede ko siyang i-cancel out. So, naging 0 na siya. Tapos, yung ating x dito, pwede kong i-cancel kasi um, factor sila ng, ng, ng bawat isa. So, pag na-cancel ko to, may matitira akong 1 sa numerator. At since nakakapag-cancel ako ng isang x dito sa denominator, I can now use my substitution method and check whether yung limit nga is nag exist Kasi meron na akong na-cancel. So, dito sa aking function ngayon, pag sinubstitute ko si 0, we'll have square root of 1 plus 0 plus 1, which will turn into 1 plus 1 and it's equal to 2. So, mapapansin nyo na hindi na 0 yung denominator using our conjugate. Therefore, yung ating limit is nag exist at 1 half. So, yung dalawang examples na pinakita ko dito, yan yung gumagamit or ginagamitan ng conjugate kasi meron tayong radicals doon sa numerator or doon sa denominator. So, yan yung isa sa mga dapat yung tandaan kapag nag evaluate kayo ng limit na merong rational expression or rational function.
Yung ating panglimang example naman, we have limit of 1 fourth plus 1 over x all over 4 plus x as x approaches negative 4. So tulad ng ginawa natin sa apat na examples, pag sinubstitute natin si negative 4 sa x, magkakaroon tayo ng 0 sa denominator, therefore it's undefined. Now, Kung mapapansin nyo, ito example number 5. Ito yung tinatawag natin complex fraction. At ang gagawin lang natin para ma-evaluate yung limit is to simplify our complex fraction. So, we'll have 1 over 4 plus 1 over x all over 4 plus x. At sa pag-simplify ng rational fraction, tulad nito, tandaan nyo yung inyong addition, multiplication, and subtraction or division ng fraction. So, if you have a plus B, or A over B, plus C over D, pwede nyo siyang i-combine using this particular pattern. So you'll have AD, so cross multiply, and then BC all over the product of your denominator. At yan yung ginawa ko dito sa aking numerator. So 1 plus 4 plus 1 over X, naging X plus 4 all over 4X by combining my fraction. At yung aking denominator, kinop kinopya ko lang yung aking denominator. So, yan yung una kong pag-simplify dun sa aking complex fraction. in ko yung aking numerator. Now, dito sa second step, mapapansin nyo yung fraction is still complex. Kasi meron kang fraction sa taas at meron ka namang expression sa baba. So, paano nyo isi-simplify ulit itong um, complex fraction na ito? Ito naman yung ginagamitan natin sa pag-simplify ng complex fraction tulad nung step number 2. So, may fractions sa taas, may fractions sa baba. Since division yan, alam natin na kapag division, you uh, copy the numerator and then you reciprocate yung ating denominator tapos nag-multiply kayo. At yan yung gagawin natin. Kung meron kang A over B divided by C over D, it's equal to A over B times D over C. At yan yung nangyari dito sa aking third step. So, from x plus 4 all over 4x divided by 4 plus x. Now I have x plus 4 over 4x, copy your denominator, times the reciprocal of your denominator, which is 1 all over 4 plus x. And by multiplication, we can cancel out x plus 4 and 4 plus x, leaving us with 1 all over 4x. Now, since nakapag-cancel na tayo ng um, terms dun sa ating sa ating uh, function, pwede na natin uling gamitin si substitution method to see if our denominator will still be 0. And in this case, we have 1 over 16 negative dun sa ating function. Therefore, yung limit is nag exist by using or by simplifying our rational or complex fraction.